live. We are live. I think, I think we are live. Yes, we are live. How are you? What's going on, guys? How are you doing? Dr. Dave here, right here. Hey, um, okay, so before we get going, I just want to put this in here at the very beginning of it because some people will watch the replay, right? So um, before we get going, I just want to say please, um, if you're not yet a VIP, VIPs always get notifications before we do these and they know exactly when we're going live. So if you're not a VIP yet, please, if you want to be one, please just go ahead and text this text VIP to this phone number, 801 893 3810. Then we will make you a VIP. That's that easy. It's really simple. And also, so let me just see real quickly. We've got Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hans is here. Good. Um, we've got Russell. What's going on from Covina? Is that West Covina or just Covina, California? Um, and we got Anita. We got Nettie. Nettie, great to see you as well. Always good to see you guys. Mark Weiner is here. We've had some offline conversations, and I think Mark's got some good stuff to say tonight. Jared's here. Jared, how are you? Happy New Year, also. Jared, by the way, I hope you can. I hope you can take your. I hope you can travel soon, my friend. I really do. Um, Jay, it's it's a. Uh, it is Jim the Dude is here. What's up, dude? What's going on? Steve Outdoor Nomad is here. I feel blessed to have all these great people hanging with us tonight. Uh, we got G. Boro. I'm oh, sorry. Hold on. Boro Bodidio. Yes. With George. What's going on, George? How you? I'll call you just George. That's better. It's easier. Easier. Alan Levine. How's it going? Raymond. What's going on? Happy 2020 to you. Also, we've got a lot of great things to talk about tonight. Um, and we're also early because it doesn't officially start for another seven minutes, but we got our VIPs here early, and I am loving this. Um, it's been a while, guys. I mean, I hope you all had a really nice holiday season. Whatever you celebrate, I hope it was good. Um, we took a little bit of time off from our live stream because just too much is going on during the holidays, and, and I don't think you wanted to mess with this during the holidays. You had other things to do. You had friends, family, get-togethers, parties, activities, and all kinds of stuff. So we gave you a break, and you gave me a break. So thanks thanks so much. Um, Steven says, Happy New Year to you. And Yoko, 30, 30 degrees Fahrenheit here in Winnipeg. That's actually, that's actually pretty warm for Winnipeg. I mean, right now here it is. It's 36 right here now. 36 in beautiful Salt Lake City. Um, Brenda Neal, how are you doing? Robin, I didn't get to say hi to you, but I, Robin, I think Robin is the one that asked about um, if we could talk a little bit about refrigerators in RVs and boondocking. It, it, that was you, Robin, right? I think it was. Um, I've actually got an expert with me. I mean, I could I could certainly talk about it too, um, but I actually have an expert. Um, his name is Mark Weiner, and, he, and the reason he's an expert on this is because he just went ahead and totally redid his fridge in his rig, and maybe he'll type a little thing in as far as what he did. But um, I will start off just by saying, um, oh, by the way, Yoko's in the other room. She's a little bit she's a little bit under the weather, so she's not going to really be coming on tonight. She's not she's not feeling she's not feeling fantastic. She's feeling Yoko. What are you feeling about about seventy to eighty percent? Would you say? She said hi, hi, which means yes in Japanese. Hi. Um, she, she, she was worse yesterday. She's getting a little better, but she's certainly not going to be on live tonight. She just um, she's not feeling well enough to be live here. Um, let's I tell you so. Let's start it off then, if it's okay. Um, does she want a bowl of chicken soup? <laughs> well, it's got to be vegan chicken soup if that's all right. <laughs> Let's start it off since Robin is here, and I know um, Mark is here. So I'll just I'll start it off about the refrigerator question real quick. We got a lot of stuff we can cover tonight too. The refrigerator question, Robin. I hope this helps you a little bit. Then Mark might want to interject and, and add something to this. Um, boon, as far as boondocking goes, um, I use propane to power my refrigerator, and I think propane is actually. First of all, propane is probably the best. I think for me, at least in my rate, propane is the most is the most reliable source 
to power the refrigerator. It just seems like I'm getting the most power. It, um, when I'm starting it from, from coal, from scratch, propane seems to be the thing that will get it going up to, to the temperature, up to speed quickest. Um, second only to uh, uh, 30, um, 30, 30 amps, 30 amps plugging in like at a campground. Um, but when you're when you're boondocking, make sure you have plenty of propane. It doesn't really it doesn't really take a lot either. Um, but make sure you have propane and power it through propane. And Mark, um, Mark says he's not an expert on RV refrigerators. Really, just got a lot of research. He let me see. Mark is very humble. Mark knows. A, Mark does know a lot, and he just got a. He replaced his fridge in his road trek. And Mark, if you just want to, if you want to maybe type something in there for um, for Robin. Um, to Robin now also let me I just want to ask because Robin could be and I don't remember so I'm really sorry um do I refer to you as Robin is a he or a she because it could be either and I, I I don't want to mess that up at all um and I'm sorry if I forgot from the past so just remind us are you a he or are you a she and we'll we'll never forget that again so sorry um also, while we're waiting for Robin to get back to it, and Mark, um, I want to share this with you. That um, so I've got a video coming out. Um, okay, Robin, I thought that I thought that, but I, I wasn't one hundred percent sure, and I didn't want to keep saying she, she, just just in case, just in case you were like you know Robin, like Robin and Batman. Um, I didn't want to mess that up. I, I just I, I try my best to know everybody and to pronounce names right. And if I if I pronounce your name wrong, let me know, and I'll I'll try my best to pronounce it right. And there's P. Huvenet. Okay, it's great to see you. Great, fantastic to see you. And Steve, I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> okay, my brain tonight. Rob from Roads of Life is here. Robert from Roads of Life is here, and um. I'm going to be asking Robert, welcome, and, and, and thanks for being here and hanging in there because I'm going to ask you a question. You just had a nice little adventure um, a very short time ago, and I want to ask you, I want you to share your adventure, Robert, with um, – and by the way, if you're not a subscriber to Robert's channel yet, Roads of Life, it's, it's, it's a great channel. It's got a nice, nice following there, and, and he's posting some good videos about his little adventure he just took. So we'll, we'll explain that a little bit more. Um, but I just also wanted to share with you guys um, my video coming out on Tuesday. Um, although it's an RV channel, and it's I guess you could say loosely it's an RV video, but it's not really RV. It's it's something that something that happened to me over the past year and a half, which made it actually very difficult and uncomfortable to be in my RV. Now I was of course in the RV a lot, but but it was difficult. It was an injury. And I talk about in this video that's coming out Tuesday, I talk about the extent of the injury, how bad it was. It was it's a leg slash knee injury, which was really, really bothering me for like well over a year. And it was getting to the point where I would get in the RV and we Yoko and I would be driving somewhere. And after 30 minutes to an hour, my leg would be hurting so badly that I just I had to turn it over to Yoko to drive. I couldn't drive. It was really, really uncomfortable. And I tried so many different things. And um, when we got to camp, when we pulled into like a campground, it was really hard to walk around. It was, it was, it's been a really, really, really tough injury. Really bad. Even when I would drive in my car, I, I had to go to Vegas um, about a month or so ago, a little over a month, about two months ago. I had to go drive to Vegas from Salt Lake City. It's about a six hour drive. And I remember on the way back when I had about an hour to an hour and a half to go before I got to Salt Lake City. My leg was hurting so badly. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I had to continue, but it was, so I, I think I found the answer. I think I found something that made it better. And, and I'm going to, I made the video. It's, it's about, I don't know, I can't remember. It's about a 10 to 10 to 12 minute video, I think, something like that. It's not real long, 10 to, 10 to 12 minutes, something like that. And I explained everything I did to, I think, get this thing healed up. And, and whether you have an injury, pain, or not, you might want to watch this because, you know, let's face it, most of us, not all, not all, but most of us are, as we get into this RV lifestyle, we're a little bit on the older side as opposed to being in our teens and 20s. Let's face it, we are. Now, I welcome people that are in their 20s to my channel, but most of us are older than that. So we're bound to have some kind of injury, issue, 
pain. And I want you to watch this Tuesday and let me know what you think because I really think I can help a lot of people. So it's again, it's not it's it's loosely about RVs, but not really exactly. Like, I'm, again, I'm not going to be telling you how to work a refrigerator, but I think it's I think it's a pretty good video. So I hope you like it. Now let me see what I've missed. People have been talking while I've been explaining that. Um, so Mark Mark explained to Robin about his refrigerator, Novacool, um, 2.2 amps per hour when it's running and. Um, Mark, you might want to say what it runs on, too, because I think it's um, – it, I remember it was different than my uh, – I've got a, a Dometic, which many of you have. I've got it like, it's a fairly small Dometic refrigerator in our rig, and it runs on either DC power, you know, of course, battery, AC power, which would be the 30 amp, or um, propane. I don't remember Mark told me what his is, but but I, he maybe explain a little more. But it sounds like it sounds to me like it's pretty high end and a really really good fridge for an RV. So I hope Mark, Mark I hope you can help Robin with her question. Um, so I do you run the fridge on propane while driving, Robin? Um, I do usually. Now I know I made a video in the past, and Mark can even, Mark, Mark and I went back and forth, and I, I had like a conversation about this. Um, because I said it's not really, I think it might have been my, my RV test or my RV quiz. I think it's generally not really advisable, but Mark actually disagreed with me because he said he spoke to some refrigerator people or RV people and they said it's totally fine. Anyway, either way, yes, we generally keep the propane on while we're driving. Never had a problem, but again, I, I don't want to like officially recommend it because I think some people would say it's dangerous I've never had an explosion yet. Boom! Oh my God, something just exploded. No, I've never had it. I never had a problem yet. So we do run the propane while we're driving. Yes. Um, Nettie, yeah. Hey, Nettie, what's going on? Hey, Doc. Hey, Nettie, what's going? How are you doing? Nettie, always good to see you here on my live streams. I, I love it. Love, love your positive energy. Um, Steven says I have three ages, chronological sixty nine. I think I'm. 24 ways as I am. Steven, so that, okay, so Steven, that's very similar to me. Let's talk about that for one second. Um, and by the way, I'm welcoming in anybody that, because officially this started at um, at 10 o'clock Eastern, although we've been, the VIPs get in early and we started early. So again, make sure, um, make sure if you're, a, if you're not a VIP yet, please text the word VIP to that number I gave you at the very beginning of the video. But um, where was I? Steven. Um, so I'm 64 now. You're 69. You're chronologically 69. So, you know, we're about five years apart. Um, I feel great, especially since I did this, what I'm going to talk about on Tuesday's video. I feel really, really good. Um, and I'm doing things that most 64 year old people can't do. I mean, Yoko and I are skiing several times per week here. We're running, walking, hiking. Um, so I feel really good at 64, but I think you're totally right. Um, I act, well, I don't think I act like I'm 12, but I probably act like I'm 18. But I, but all kidding aside, I think being, acting like you're a kid and like never leaving the playground keeps us young. And I don't want to act like a 64 year old. I mean, that's 60, my grandfather was 64 when I was like a little kid and he didn't do like a lot of fun stuff that I do now, like we all do. So I don't know, maybe 64 is like the new, what do they say? 64 is the new 44, maybe. But Steve, Steve, thanks for that. Steven, thanks for that. I, I totally agree. Act young, be young, and ignore the chronological age for sure. Um, Mark says, yes, you can use propane while driving. For example, my generator is propane and I want if I want rear AC, I run the generator. Very interesting. Now, I've never, I've never run my generator while we're driving the rig down the road. I just haven't really had any real reason to do that. Um, I mean, we could do it if we had like somebody sitting in the back and they wanted AC, but generally it's just me and Yoko and Boo Boo, our cat, and we don't really need the AC going in the back. So we just keep the, you know, while we're driving, we keep the AC going up front. Obviously, the driver and, and the passenger were up, up front, and Boo Boo is generally with us up front. So we don't need to really run the um, generator at all. But we do, yes, we do run the propane while we're driving to keep the refrigerator really, really cool. You can use the coach battery to do that too. But then what happens? I find that you got to remember 
when you stop for a if you're visit if you're going into a Walmart, if you're stopping somewhere to do a hike or something like that, you got to remember to turn it off and turn the propane on, or you're going to have a dead coach battery when you when you come back into the rig. So we learned that propane powers it best anyway. We just keep the propane going. We just we just keep it going, and it works really well. Now, something Mark told me, and I'm not familiar with this, but Mark told me, um, and again, I'm referring to Mark Weiner, who's here, who's doing a lot of commenting here. Mark told me that um, these refrigerators in RVs are not really supposed, to, they're not designed to work above a certain elevation or altitude. I don't remember what he said. He might've said over 9,000 feet. I don't remember, but I will tell you, we've had ours running on propane at, oh, nine, 9,000 to 9,600 because the, the town of Breckenridge is, Breckenridge, Colorado is 9,600 just in the town. And I know we've had ours running there on propane without without a problem. So again, your mileage may vary. Um, will your fridge run on the engine alternator? Um, I want to say, I want to say, no. somebody can correct me. I want to say no, Jim the dude. I want to say no because um, it only it'll run while you're driving. The choice, the only choices you have are. Propane. Well, the only three choices I have at all are propane, coach battery, or um, 30 amp AC. Um, so while you're driving, the only two choices really are, are coach battery, DC, or um, propane. Now, other rigs might be different. I'm not sure about that. I have not heard of one that runs on the um, on on the engine alternator. I'm, I haven't heard of that, but there there might be a, such a thing. I just don't know that for sure. Um, let's see. P. Hubinet says, when you are driving and your fridge has a 12-volt option, there is no reason not to run it on 12-volt. It's free. That said, I run the pro – okay, well, I'm, I'm totally with you. Totally with you, um, P. Hubinet. Totally with you on that. I, I do it the exact same way. We run it on the propane, even though, yeah, you can run it for free on the, on the coach battery for sure. You could. Now – um, let's take a let's take a 180 for a second because I promise my buddy Robert from Rose of Life here. Robert, are you still there? Robert, just give me a thumbs up or say yes, I'm here. Are you here, Robert? Robert, probably. Oh, I'm, by the way, if you all want to pop some popcorn and come back, you know, and and, and I was gonna I was gonna pop a little popcorn and be eating popcorn with you all. <laughs> but um, Robert, okay, Robert is here. Robert is probably here now. Robert, Robert had a little interesting journey a couple of weeks ago and Robert, please fill in the blanks because I don't remember. I don't, I don't want to get anything wrong here, but Robert is, does not have his own RV yet. He's been, he, if you see his channel, he's done a lot of research. He's really, um, really well read and, and ex I say experienced in this, but he doesn't really own his own. But what he did um, for a little trip, he rent, he and his wife rented an RV um, Robert, you might want to. Oh, so here is a, Tra a Travato KL, and it sounded like. I mean, I watched the videos. It seems like he had a really good time and enjoyed the rig. I didn't see anything that he said, at least up till now. I didn't see anything that he said that he didn't like it. So Robert uh, so had had a blast. So this was his first time ever, ever RVing, and it's so good to hear that because if you want to watch his video, you can see some of the stuff they did. But Robert, so if how many and how many nights were you out in the in the in the rental in the um, Travado? How many nights were you actually out? And I can't remember. Did you boondock or I think you were at a campground? I'm pretty sure you were at a campground, but I don't remember that exactly. But I I think you camped. One thing we noted: we got tired early in the evening. Well, yeah. Hello. I mean, of course, you know. That's that's one of the reasons why I don't like to push it all day long in my RV. I don't like to drive 600 miles in a day and then I'm tired. No, Yoko and I try to do, and we, I was just talking to Mark Weiner offline about this a little while ago. We we err on the side of, of not driving a lot at all and enjoying the scenery, stopping when we can. I mean, we'd love just even walking into a Walmart or a truck stop and looking around at all the stuff. And of course, if there's any parks or really cool things, attractions, we'll stop in. We, we never push it, never, ever, ever push it. So then 
once we're ready to stop for the evening. And stopping for the evening for us is generally, it could be 3 p.m. Because it's about a lifestyle. It's not about, it's not about push, push, push. How far can we go in one day? It's not about that, at least for us. It's about relaxing, enjoying the ride, turning on the music, having some good conversation. Maybe sometimes I'll make some phone calls while we're driving, but enjoying the ride. And then when we get there, wherever there is, whether it's a campground or whatever it might be, a national park, whatever it might be, not being too tired and, and being able to enjoy ourselves and sit around the campfire if we have a campfire, eat some dinner and really just hang out with Boo Boo and just have some fun. But if we're tired, all we want to do is go to sleep. And I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to enjoy. So let me see what he said. Um, so you were out um, three nights and four days. You were in an RV park and you hooked up. You got to be careful with, you can't say these days, you know, look, having kids, your kids will tell you, you can't use the word hook up because hooking up means something different for young people than it does for us. Hooking up, if you say to, to a, if you say to a kid, Hey, you want to hook up? That means, do you want to have sex? So you got to be very careful. Be very careful using the phrase hook up. <laughs> but I know what you meant. I'm kidding. But that is true, though. That really is true. So be careful um, when you're talking to somebody younger about hooking up because, you know, you might be involved in like the Me Too movement or something. Who knows? Um, so, Robert, did you like it? And are you going to? <laughs> you hooked up. Well, I'm glad, at least I'm glad you're with your wife. How was hooking up in the RV? Well, we won't go there exactly yet. But um, so, but seriously, all, all kidding aside, how did you like your Travado? And what's your next step? Are you going to buy one? Or are you going to wait, do more research, test out another one? What, what are you going to do? Yeah, Mark, look in the Urban Dictionary before you use a, a phrase like that. Because I used to say, to my kids, like, hey, let's hook up around five o'clock or whatever. And they say, hey, dad, no, dad, you can't say let's hook up. That's not really cool anymore. You can't say that. <laughs> you got to be careful. Um, you like the Travado. Are you going to, do you think you're going to buy one? Will you buy a Travado? The KL has two beds, which we liked since I snore. Yeah, okay. It has two beds and you snore, but. But it's a, it's a it's an it's a class B RV. You're you're like you're like this close to each other. It's not like you're in a separate bedroom. You're you're still if if you snore, it's not going to. Your wife's going to hear it. <laughs> I'm not buying that. <laughs> um, the next step is going to the Florida RV Super Show. So that's is that is that going to be in? I can't remember. That's in Tampa, right? Is that going to be in, it's in Tampa, I believe? And it's, I know it's coming out really, really soon because I think we're going to miss each other. I'm going to be in Tampa for business, and I think we're going to miss you by a few days, unfortunately. Um, I, know, well, I know it's in January, but January is a long month. So um, <laughs> I'm, like a little, I'm like a little fiery tonight. Um, so Dave says, Dr. Dave, I believe you once said that you are a tall guy. How well do you fit on your bed? Do you sleep north, south, or do you sleep diagonal? So, so Dave, it's a great question. Number one, I will tell you. So um, in case you all don't know, Yoko and I have a Pleasure Way XL TS. It's a 2006 – okay, wait a minute. Hold on. It's a 2007 build on a 2006 um, e, a Ford E350 chassis. So it's a 2007 build out. Um, it has a king – listen to this. It's got a king size bed. The sofa goes down, you know, goes down like that, and then we add a couple of things at the end of it, and it's a, it turns into a king size bed, very very comfortable king size bed. So um, we do sleep north south. We sleep north south, but there is enough room if we wanted to sleep east west. Or uh, there's no real reason to do diagonally because it's it's a king. It's like square. It's like both directions are the same. Both dimensions are the same. Um, but I used to have the um, leisure travel van, and that was the bed was smaller. And I got to be honest with you, I did not get a good night's sleep. No matter how I tried it, my feet were always up against the window or the wall. I did not get a good night's sleep in the leisure travel. But in this pleasure way, this our, ours at least, king size bed, I feel like I'm in bed at home, and I there's there's plenty of room. I guess I'm six two plus. I'm like a little a little over six two, which is you know. 
it's a toll on the toll side for sure. Uh, we love our bed. And let's face it, I think having the right kind of bed is one of the most important things in an RV because as Robert said, he was tired when he pulled into camp at night. Well, sleeping is really important. We all need sleep. And if you're going to get a lousy night's sleep every night in an RV, it's going to catch up to you really soon and you're just going to dread it. So um, I'm going to be posting our schedule as it comes up pretty soon. I'll put it somewhere, probably on maybe on the RV Dummy website or on the Facebook page or something. Um, if any of you can, if we can catch up sometime in 2020, I'll be happy to give you a tour of our rig and show you show you what, how we use it, what we do, and also show you our bed because I love, I can't tell you how much I love our bed. Um, I have not seen another, even, even in most of the class A's and certainly the class C's, um, the biggest I I've, I've usually see is a queen. That's, that's usually the biggest I see. Um, we really lucked out. We found, we found the right one. We really found the right one, and we love it. Okay, let me catch up to some of the comments here. Um, we like the two beds because we could easily get out of bed and not bug each other. Well, <laughs> not more than usual. Well, that's true. It's a good point. But um, I think when I get out of bed, if I have to get out of bed and use the bathroom in the middle of the night or something, um, I don't think it, I don't think it, it's it's a king. So I don't I don't I don't think Yoko's bothered. I don't she I think she sleeps right through it. I don't think she cares. Um, you're welcome, Dave. I hope that helped you. Um, Mark Stephen from Get Smart. It is the cone of silence. Trust me, Let old reference. I, I remember Get Smart, but I don't remember. I, I might, I might have missed some comments here. So, the cone of silence. Cohen, the cone of silence. <laughs> um, let's see. Wait. Ask the kids how are you supposed to say? Wait a minute. Let me. Let just scroll by. Wait. Ask the kids how are you supposed to say? I need to hook up the trailer. I'm gonna. I'm going to ask my kids. I'll get back to you on that one. Um, pleasure weight. Billy, Billy. Hey, Billy, how's it going? Billy says, pleasure ways have the best beds, king size. And yeah, it's, it's, it, it, when I say I feel like I'm sleeping at home, Billy, I really mean it. It is, it's not like I'm sleeping on a king size bed, but it's, it's like on a board or anything. I feel like it's super, super comfortable. Um, Hooked up, Rob, Mark, and Rob, Mark is going to hook up with Robin. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, oh, I read that wrong. I thought I thought we we're already having some hookups on the on the on the live stream here, but no, no, not that kind of hookup. Okay. Um. <laughs> you need to level it when you're hooking up, Robert. Robert, when you're hooking up, well, you should probably be maybe kind of level. Depends what you're thinking or doing. I don't know. I'm not sure about it. <laughs> we should do a video, actually. See, people don't really want to talk about this, but we should actually do a video on what it's like to hook up. Well, see, it's, it's if, if you're with your wife, it's not really called hooking up. Because if you're with your wife, it's that's what you're supposed to be with your wife. Hooking, hooking up, from what I understand from my kids, hooking up is like, generally, it's like a one-night stand. So we could do a video on, on how to hook up in an RV. I mean, maybe that would be something that people would want to find out about. I don't know. We have a little guest here. Hold on one second. Come here. Come here. We're doing a video here. We're doing a video, and here is Boo Boo. Boo Boo, you're, what do you like best about the RV? Do you like sleeping in bed with us? Do you like eating? Do you like using your litter basket, litter box? What do you like best in the RV? Oh, my friend's here. You just want to get off. You just want to, you just want to go back down. But I'll tell you something. Boo Boo is like the absolute best RV traveler. He, he, you know, a lot of times cats, I don't know if you travel with animals, but cats generally don't like being in vehicles going down the road. They hide, they meow the whole time. They don't like new places pull into a campground. They don't really like that, but he's really taken to the road. He loves the road. He, he, he loves it. So I think we really lucked out with Boo Boo. And you know, yeah, Boo Boo, like um, less than a year ago, had like a really, really bad health care. As many of you probably remember, I, I um, a lot of shows on that. We thought we, thought we were going to lose this cute thing. 
He's 19. He's almost, he's around, right around 19 years old right now. And we thought we were going to lose him um, sometime last year. But he made a miraculous comeback. Probably maybe had to do with some of you all, a lot of you praying. And he's just, he's loving life in Utah and in the RV. And Google, I'll let you go down now, okay? You see what I missed here. Um, <laughs> boo boo, I like sleeping. I like sleeping, eating, and scratching the furniture. <laughs> boo boo is a cute pie. Thanks, Robin. Boo boo is, he's like the best traveler, but he really is a great traveler. Our dog hates driving in the car, but did very well in the RV. That's very interesting because I guess it seems a little more like a home. You know, he can cuddle up on the sofa, move around. So, so that's really interesting. I'm glad to hear your dog really did like it, Robert. Um, Rich Riddle, I visited Embassy Factory in Indiana. Very impressive. Make their Class B's Ford Transit chassis. Very innovative floor plans. Cool. Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd love to go to Indiana and see some of these, see some of the places where these things are made. It must be, it must be a really, really cool thing to see where these are made, how they're made. It's probably, it's got to be great. So one day we'll get to Indiana and, and check that out. Um, but what I was going to say is like, if there's any way sometime during the year 2020 that we can hook up, but I mean it in the old fashioned way, the old fashioned uh, and if we're like, let's say we're camping somewhere, I'll try to put it out there. So if anybody's in the area or planning a trip already, I've got a trip planned with um, Mark. Mark and his wife are going to, we're going to be camping with them sometime. Mark, when is that going to be? Is that going to be in May? I think in Utah, somewhere in Utah, we're going um, for a couple of nights. They're going to be on a trip. We're going to be head down to meet them. Uh, but it's really great having this community here because it's, it's, I feel like I know so many of you just by just through doing this, just through the videos and the live streams. Um, maybe one day we will be able to take it to the next level and have, maybe we'll, maybe we'll buy out, a, we'll reserve a whole campground. They will just say this campground on such and such a date is going to be only for VIPs of the RV dummy channel, something like that. And we'll all converge on this campground. This is kind of like a dream and just hang out and have like a, a really cool time all together. Um, maybe that'll happen in the future. That'd be, that would be fun. I, th yeah, I think I thought, it was, I know it's on my calendar, Mark, so don't worry, but it, I thought it was in May. I thought, I thought. Um, <laughs> by hook up, you mean park. <laughs> Let me see if I have anything else. I, um, what else did I have here? I think I've gone over everything I wanted to talk about. Um, so yeah, so I want so make by the way, make sure if you have not liked the video, if uh, if you have not liked the live stream yet, if you have not liked the live stream, just give us a real quick little uh, thumbs up, like real quick because it, it does help. It does help the video. It helps the channel um, quite a bit. I think it does at least, but it can't hurt. So please, there you go. There, people are clicking, click, click, click. Let's see, we got thirty people live on here right now. Thirty people are live, and we only have twelve thumbs up. Now, what's going on, guys? That's that's like impossible. By the way, here's a place. I, I'm, I've got this mug I'm using. Yoko and I went here um, two years ago. It's called Avalanche Ranch, and it's in Colorado. Now we did not have our. We did not. We were not in our RV. We went there and uh, rented a cabin for a couple of nights. And it's a really, really cool place. They've got. Um, they've got uh, hot springs there. Um, the cabins are very rustic, and we can do some cooking in there. It's it's really really cool. Again, I don't have any ownership, but I was drinking tea out of their mug, which I bought in the in the gift shop. And it just reminded me, if you're ever in the area and want a really cool place to go to, it is a really wonderful place to check out. It's called again, it's called Avalanche Ranch, cabins and hot springs. You will thank me a million times if you go there. Maybe. How cool would it be if we all hung out there for a couple of nights sometime? That would be great. It's probably, it's fun to do probably any time of the year, but in the winter, well, as long as the roads are open to get in there. But if, as long as the roads are open, if there's, it, because as you're in the hot springs, you're like staring up at the mountains and there's like snow all over the mountains. And it's just, it's like such a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful sight. It's really cool. We really, really enjoyed ourselves there. Okay. Um, What's so nice that Steven says, what's so nice about the chat is that people, most people use their real name. Yes. You know, generally when I get a, um, 
a troll. And by the way, the trolls have been few and far between. Maybe they found out that I don't accept trolls on the channel. Um, it's so funny. Isn't it funny, Stephen, how um, so many people use fake names and like handles that you can never, you don't know who they are. So it's easy to hide behind the keyboard and say bad stuff. But yeah, we feel like most of us here know each other already from these chats. And it's just, it's, it's pretty darn cool. It's a really cool community. Hans, Hans says we're taking a road trip to Florida starting next week. So I'm actually going to be in Florida. Let me think. Let me think. I'm, I'm speaking in Tampa on Friday. Then I'm going to be going to Orlando on Saturday. I'm going to be pretty busy because I'm meeting with my kids who live in Jacksonville, but they're meeting us in Orlando. So, But I, I will be in Florida. I will be there. I will not be in my rig. I'm going to be flying there from Salt Lake. I'll just be there for a very short time. Uh, but it'll be in kind of like the Tampa, then slash Tampa, then the Orlando area, that area. Um, let's see. Well, I'm just kind of trying to catch up on any comments here that were made. And um, guys, I think, guys, thanks. I'm feeling like I'm feeling such good energy from you guys tonight. I mean, we're um, it's it's. See, this is not about me. This this live stream, it's really about you. And I look, we could come on and I could live stream and I could just be talking the whole time and monologuing. And but you guys are like asking, not only asking great questions, but helping each other out. And that's what it's all about. That's why I created the channel. Like I've told you, I really want this to be more of a um, more of a community than Dave just getting on every week and doing a video. I, I really value the community, and I think you guys do also. Um, and the fact that we're still, you know, fairly relatively small channel, I mean, I'm closing in on 10,000 subscribers, but it still feels like a, a small channel, small group of people that when we get together on the live stream, kind of a lot of us know each other. And if you're new, it's it's great because we want to get to know you as well. So um, if you're watching the replay of this live stream, the replay, please, we try to live stream twice a month now, generally on a Sunday evening. So just um, the best way to do it, is, again, is to... Um, is to get on the VIP list. And again, right here, just text text the word VIP to that phone number, 801-893-3810, and you'll get notifications before anybody else. And my VIPs here can tell you, they can vouch for me. Please back me up on this. I never abuse your phone number. I don't like drunk text you in the middle of the night and say, hey, how's it going? <laughs> no, I'm very, very respectful. I'm very respectful um, regarding your phone number. And I, I don't share with anybody and I only use it when we're about to go on a live stream and let you know like what time we're going on, et cetera. So that's, so that's, um, I'd love to have you as a VIP if you're not a VIP yet. And plus, like I said, I'm trying to come up, I've got some ideas that we can take this VIP thing to the next level in, in the year 2020, 20, we're, we're 2020, it's like 2020 now. Um, I've got some really cool things in mind, which I'm still marinating on these for, for VIPs. Um, hey there, it's, um, well, I'm going to call you D, D2-2006. How are you doing there? Because I don't know your name. Sorry, but I'll call you D2-2006. How's that? That's good enough, right? <laughs> uh, Dave doesn't share your info very <laughs> Robert, Robert is like vouching for me. But I really – I'm very respectful. If you, if, and also, here's another thing. If you talk to me offline by text message or by you know um, something on Facebook or where, wherever it might be on YouTube, and you tell me something is confidential, um, I will never share your confidential information with anybody. So if you tell me not to share it, I will keep it. I'll try to help you, but I'll keep it between the two of us. Um, if you tell me it's okay to share, that's a whole different story. But if yeah, something confidential between us, I'll always respect that privacy, confidentiality, et cetera. I mean, remember, do you remember, how many of you remember um, several months ago, there was a guy who told me about a um, large, large, large inheritance he got. It was like, I think it was $40 million from his mother or something like that. Um, he told me some things offline that said, you know, don't share who it is. And I, and I never did. I never shared his real name or anything. And I, so I, I, I really take this all very seriously. And I, I don't, I, I don't want to, um, uh, uh, let's go against your, you know, privacy concerns or anything like that. So your, your word is go with me. 
trust me. Trust me, I'm a doctor. That's what, isn't that a crazy, trust me, I'm a doctor. Like, like big deal, big deal. <laughs> um, Robin says, how do you reach inner dual tires to check tires? Oh, so Mark and I just had a great conversation about that like the other day. So Mark, it sounds like he's helping her. Um, but I have to, roads of what Rob, Robert has to run early. Robert, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on here. You're a tremendous help. I really did want to, I want you to, I did want you to share um, your, you know, some of the details of your trip with my friends here. I'm glad you did. Happy New Year. Thanks so much for being here, Robert. We're going to end it in a couple of seconds anyway, because I think we're, I never like to over, overstay my welcome. And we're like 40 minutes into this thing. And I think that's a good amount of time. We, I think we've answered questions. We've hung out together. We've had Happy New Year cheer together. And I think that's that's all we can ask, right? So with that, Robert's leaving. And Robert, you're not the reason we're breaking up the party, but maybe one of them. Um, Tammy says, hey, Dr. Dave, Tammy, what's going on? Tammy, if you're just getting here, Tammy, you might want to watch the replay shortly as soon as it's as soon as it's published because we're getting ready, we're getting ready to end this thing. It's been a great, it's been like a fabulous 40 minutes. Um, but yeah, yeah, we start a little bit early for the VIPs too. So um it's been a great 40 minutes, but we're probably not gonna go too much longer at all. Um, Robert, always happy. There are four videos total. They come out in the next. So I'm going to really recommend that everybody watch Robert's um, series of his videos that he, when he rented that RV, the Travado, um, check it out. It's, it, they're very interesting. And, and, and we all, again, we're all trying to help each other out. Um, you're very welcome, Dave. I appreciate you being here. I really appreciate it. Um, P. Hoopin. Hey, P. Hoopin, remind me again. I'm sorry. Remind me of your first name one more time. I'm so sorry. I think I'm going to say it was, I want to say Paul, but I, but I, I could be totally wrong. And I, I just hate to mess people's names up. Um, so being a YouTube junkie, I can tell you that this live stream is a unique experience that will not last forever. Um, that will not last forever. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, so tell me what you mean it won't last forever. Does that mean YouTube's going to pull the plug on these things or, or I'm not sure what you mean. So please. Remind me of your first name and tell me what you mean by that. Then we're going to probably end it. Let's see. I thought, okay, I thought it was, I was right. I thought it was Paul. I just didn't, it's been, it's been a month. It's been a month since we live streamed. So, I, um, but it's, okay. So I know it's Paul now. I remember. And Paul, tell me what you mean again, one more time by, um, you don't think it's going to last forever. I'm, I'm curious. I'm just really curious to know what you mean by that. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you to type, 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 type. <laughs> As you grow, it loses the intimacy. Um. Well, point where? Okay, so my when I first started my channel, my channel was really young. I did promise everybody that if you make a comment or ask a question, I will answer. I will respond to everything. Well, as you know, we definitely have grown, and it's very difficult for me to keep that promise now. And I've told them, I'm really sorry, but there's just no way. I try my best, but there's no way I can respond to everything. And even if people try to text message me or send me a private message on Facebook or something, I try my best, but I can't always answer. So never take never take it personally, please, because I just you don't want you don't want Dr. Dave to be wrapped up every minute of every day. Doing, I've got all this stuff I got to do. So never take it personally. But Paul, um, I think there's only a certain number of people that are going to actually attend live streams. And even if, like, let's say we got 31 people here right now, the people come and go, I know. Um, we have 31 people. Even if we double that and there were 50 or 60 or 70 people on the live stream, I think it's, I think it'd still be manageable, very manageable. So I think, um, I think we're good for quite some time. Um, with the live stream. So I, I, my goal is to keep these live streams intimate and interact with everybody that comes on and not ignore anybody. And I think we can keep that going for quite some time. I really do. But um, thanks. Thanks, Robin. I appreciate, I appreciate you being here. And thank you very much, Robin, for asking the question. That was a really, really good question, which we could expand on more in the future as well. Um, my hair is looking much better tonight. Well, it's so funny that you said that, Russell. I just got a cut yesterday. I just got a cut because 
it was getting too long and messy. And, and so, you know, as you know, we do a lot of skiing and stuff like that outside. So whenever I would put my hat on here, and I always wear a helmet skiing, but sometimes also I wear a hat if it's just at, we're outside or if it's like during lunchtime we're skiing. So I put my hat on, but then when I took would take my hat off, it would just be, my hair would just be like, it would be like a total, it would just look horrible. It'd be like worse than Bernie Sanders hair. Now that's pretty damn bad. His hair, if somebody that, okay, let's just for a second. Bernie Sanders has the money. He has the money to pay somebody. This is not a political statement, trust me. He has the money to pay somebody to get his hair to look decent. Maybe not great, but decent. His hair looks god awful all the time. I don't want to, I don't want my hair to look like that. So I, I yeah, I got a cut yesterday. So thanks for noticing and thanks for the compliment. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's funny, but yeah, having helmet hair or hat hair um, in the winter is just it looks it, it was looking horrible. I got to admit. Okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> on that note. On that note, um, got to go have a great next two weeks. Steven, same to you. We're, and I'll t I will tell Yoko, I will tell Yoko that you all wish her, um, wish her luck and, and, and good health and, and healing energy and stuff like that. Hey, um, let's, let's do this. I want to say I really, before you go, Steven, hang on one more second. Um, Robert, I hope you're still there. Paul, um, from the bottom of my heart, I really, really appreciate all you guys that take the time to come on here and not only come on here, but interact with us. It makes a great community. Um, I won't stretch it out any longer. Have a wonderful, healthy, happy 2020. We'll be back in two weeks doing the live stream. Make sure you check my video out on Tuesday. I think it will help you on some level. Good night, guys. Thanks so much for being here. The Army officially signing off. See you later.